throne who exalt the Lord Jesus this morning is the reason why we are here just go ahead in this solemn assembly I don't want to worship him exalt the Lord this morning is the reason why we are here our gathering will be in vain if Jesus is not in this place I just want to reverence his holy presence worship him exalt his name magnify the name of the Lord declare his praise yes he's the alpha and omega the beginning and the end he is the first and the last go ahead and worship him he deserves our worship he deserves our praises he deserves to be exalted he deserves to be glorified worship the almighty god worship king jesus jesus the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world jesus christ the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Worship Him this morning. Exalt His holy name. He's alive in the land of our days. <laughs> He's the Prince of the Kings of the earth. <laughs> He's the Alpha and Omega. <laughs> He's the first begotten from the dead. <laughs> He's the one who kills and makes alive. He's the one who has the key of David, who opens and no one can shut. He shuts and no one can open. He is the great God above all gods. Worship him this morning. Death could not hold him captive. Karabranda <laughs> Shagaya. Just worship him. <laughs> His name is the name that is higher than every other name. He has no rival. He has no equal. He's God by himself alone. Even demons mention his name and they tremble. Death could not hold him. We worship you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you, Almighty God. Oh, Jesus, we ask that you perceive this aroma of our worship in this place this morning. God, this service is to your honor. We ask that you will delight in us today. We ask that you will show up in our midst today. We ask that you will accept our worship today. We ask that you be glorified in our midst today. You, we ask that the power behind the cross will be made available in this place today to turn around the situations of God's people. Whether on site or online, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. For in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Hallelujah. Somebody gives Jesus a shout of praise. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Please help me to welcome someone to just say you are welcome to this year's solemn assembly. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. You may have your seat. God bless you. Um, today's solemn assembly. We are here because of Jesus. Several years ago, an event took place. Starting from Sunday, a day like Sunday when Jesus uh, uh, entered triumphantly into Jerusalem. And after that, he went through the, to the place of, uh, to, the, to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. And after the prayers were said, they came to arrest him. And that day he went to the judgment seat, he was treated anyhow, who we'll reads will we'll be following uh, with the reading of scriptures today. But what I'm trying to say is that this week actually commemorates a holy week. For the Christian, it's a very significant week. Because it represents the time that Jesus paid the price, that became the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. 
So a Friday like this, we call it Good Friday. That word good is good. But it's a day of pain, a day of shame, a day of sorrow. A day that you had to go through because of you and I. You had to go through the pain. You had to endure contradictions of sinners around you. You had to endure sorrow, shame, beatings, all sorts. All that him just to save you and I. He went through the cross. He died there on the cross. He was crucified. Beloved, you cannot imagine yourself going through that kind of pain. But he went through it for you and I. And today, we are commemorating the sacrifice he paid for us. We are Christians today because of what he did. And I want to challenge us. Let our, our gaze be on Jesus. The author and the finish of our faith. Let our gaze be on him. Let's look to him. And let our faces not be ashamed today. And let, let, let our lives become radiant with his glory. So I welcome you to this solemn assembly this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus once again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right away we'll be having our first Bible reading. And... To take the Bible reading, this help me to make welcome Tehila Ejobe. Tehila Ejobe. Put your hands together for her. Put your hands, keep jamming the hands together. Keep jamming the hands together. Keep jamming the hands together. Taking the first Bible reading from Matthew chapter 27, verse 11 to 32. And it says, And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Yearest thou not how many things the weakness against thee? And he answered him to never reward, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor was on to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Who will ye that I release unto you? Barabbas, or Jesus, which is called Christ, for he knew that for envy that had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twine will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I then do with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor asked, said, Why, what evil had he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that a rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man, see ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he was scourged, Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a sackcloth robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on his head, 
And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put his own lament on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Tehila Ejobe. Put those hands together for our dear daughter. Hallelujah. That was a powerful Bible reading. Yeah, we're going straight away to the next item. We want to receive the new wine for the hymn. Put your hands together for the new wine.
you would have been without Jesus. Have you sat down to think or to calculate the cost of how many rams you would have you, have, you had to kill just to be who you are today? Have you ever imagined in this whole world, in all your company, in all the relationships and friendships and acquaintances that you have, who can die for you? Who can take your place so that you will live who is that one that can say, don't worry, I would rather go to the hang man instead of you. If you have that person this morning, you can sit down. But if you know there is nobody like that, can you lift up those hands and bless this Jesus? The one who alone is worthy. Only him. Only you, Jesus. Only you, Jesus. Only you, Jesus, only you can die for me, only you can love me this much, only you can touch me like this, only you, Jesus, we bless your name, thank you for the cross, Jesus. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame. In love you. Love, Lord, thank you for the name. Peace wash me in the green sin flow. Now, what I want is your forgiveness. Whoa. 
join me and sing say thank you for the cross thank you for the cross oh i thank you so much lord i thank you thank you for the price you paid bearing all my sin and shame in love you came and gave amazing grace thank you lord thank you for this love Stand the bell, peace and wash me in your cleansing flow. Now, all I want is your forgiveness and embrace. Oh, seated on the throne you were seated at the right hand of the father oh lord be crowned you now be crowned you lord with many you reign in victorious you reign victorious Somebody praise the Lord this morning. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for thanking all of our sins. Thank you for taking our place. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking all my pain. My oh, Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lion, worthy is the Son of God. I don't have any of us know the song, just lift up the hands and worship Him. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lion, worthy is the Son. Of God, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lion, worthy is the Son of God. Is 
the Son of God. But he is the Lamb. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He knew no sin, yet he went to the slaughter like a sheep and like a lamb. He uttered no word, even though he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world. But he decided to say nothing. Not because he was not eloquent, not because he had no words to say, not because he had no defense. After all, he's called the advocate, but he did not defend himself. He took it all just so you and I can stand here today. You are worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lion. Worthy is the Son of God. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. Jesus, you are light. You are my Lord. You make everything all right. I'm devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You're my joy, you're my hope. I will never be ashamed. Devoted to your praise and forever to your name. You're my king, you are my Lord. I will never be ashamed. I'm devoted to your praise. And forever, Jesus, you are good, you are kind. I have never, I'm devoted, oh, simply devoted. Oh. Devoted to you, Lord. I'm simply devoted. I'm simply devoted to you. I will serve you. What can you do in exchange for the love of Jesus? What can you give? Do you have money enough? What can you sacrifice? Oh, I'm devoted to you, Lord. I'm devoted to you, Lord. I'm simply devoted. Shut up.
Hallelujah. Just go ahead and worship the Lord. Exalt his name. Yes, just magnify the name of the Lord. Go ahead and exalt him. We want to take some time to worship and to take some prayers of devotion. That's what we'll be doing the next few minutes. So you can take any posture you want. You want to kneel down, you want to sit down, you want to stand up. You can take any posture you want. We just, we just want to show some appreciation to Jesus. To this Jesus. Yes, he's the one who died for us. And that's why we are gathered here today. For the price he paid. <laughs> For what he went through because of you and I. The Bible says, Castly for a righteous man. I mean, Castly for uh, with a righteous man died for another righteous man. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for the ungodly because of what the love of God did, what love provoked in him. So I just wanted to worship him. Let's show some appreciation to God. Let's show some, so show some appreciation to Jesus for what he did. On the cross of Calvary. I just want to go ahead. Worship him from the depth of your heart. Yes. We're spending time just before him. To exhort him. To worship him. And devote our lives unto him. Just go ahead and bless his name. Appreciate him for the price he paid. Even on the cross. <laughs> There's nothing. That you can give back. That can measure up. For his death on the cross. There's nothing that we can get back that can measure to the price he paid. Nothing. Just go ahead and worship. Like someone who is showing some appreciation. Someone who is grateful for having Jesus go through the pain, go through the shame, go through the cross to redeem mankind back to God, to save us. From all our sins. Oh yes, I got a brother in the bush. He's worthy. The little bush. Go ahead and bless his name. Exalt his name. Yes. He might have a little bush. Sang a little bush. In a little bush. Sang a little bush. Just go ahead. This is solemn assembly. Just be one on one with the Lord. Let Him know you appreciate Him. You appreciate the price He paid for you. Yes, He carried my bush. You did not wait for me. To draw near to you, but you clothe yourself in filled humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let my hear your voice calling me. To you, yes, Lord Jesus, and forever grateful for the cross, and forever grateful to you that you gave. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, to, to seek, seek and save the Lord. Lord. Oh, you, did you did not, not wait for, for me. me. Oh, Jesus, thank you. To cry oh, out to you. you. Yes, Jesus. But Will you clothe you yourself in fruit. humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you. Yes, you did not wait for me to cry out to you. Yes, you did not wait for me to cry 
you this morning. To you. For the cross, the cross, forever grateful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That you came to see and save the. Nothing we can give back. They can measure up to what he did. I just want to still go ahead and bless his name. Show some appreciation. Many of us would have been in the club today. Many of us would have been on the streets. Chasing shadows. Many of us would have been criminals, courtists. Many of us would have been wife beaters today. Many of us would have been drunkards today. We know where he picked us from. Don't pretend that you don't know what Jesus did for you. Many of us knew where we were, where he met us, where he met us. We knew our lifestyles. We knew what he did. We knew where he met us, where we encountered that cross that brought the, that brought the transformation, that brought the encounter. We knew who we were. If you deceive yourself, I will not deceive myself. I knew who I was. I knew who I'm. he has made me to be today. Beloved, let's show some gratitude to God. We didn't save ourselves. If not for the cross, the blood of bulls and heifer could not have atoned for our sins. The blood of rams, the blood of camels, the blood of birds or pigeons couldn't have atoned for our sins. But the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is shed. Yes, that's brought a transformation, brought a redemption. Oh yes, I just want to know to, to think deeply this morning. Yes. Take a deep thought. <laughs> oh yes. Why not just take a deep, deep thought. Huh? And why not just do some retrospect in your heart. You knew yourself. I knew myself. I knew who I was. I knew where I was. I knew where he picked me up. <laughs> Washed me clean by his blood. <laughs> I knew. I knew. Many of us here see it. We're a bunch of rascals, sinners. We, we could not stand in his presence. But here we are. Now we're rejoicing as if we never committed a sin in our lives. That's what the blood of Jesus had done for us. As if we never committed a sin. As if we never committed, perpetrated any evil deed. And, and we knew people who were fornicators, drunkards, who were foreigners, who were all into all stuff in the past. But here we are. The blood has washed us clean. <laughs> We're just like white, we're as white as snow. <laughs> we are radiant in his presence, accepted in the very presence of all, of God, in the holiness of all. It's what he did when he died on the cross. Thank God, thank God for Jesus. Worship him, worship him. Appreciate him. This is solemn assembly. Probably for, year, for months now, you've never thought about the price he paid for you. <laughs> This is the time to think about it. Now we can sing hallelujah. We can dance in the presence of the Lord. We can shout hosanna. Whoa. We can shout hosanna. People like us. We can shout hosanna. Hey. We can shout hosanna. Because of what he did. What the blood. What the blood of Jesus did. Oh God. He's worthy of a worship. Jesus, Lamb of God, is worthy, worthy is your name. I just want to sing that song without instruments, please. Jesus, the man in the sand, the most. Help me to sing Jesus, Lamb of God, once again. Jesus, oh Lamb of God. Oh, 
The purifying of the flesh, the under the Old Testament. Remember in the New Living Translation, thing, what I want to pick is there. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a young cow could cleanse people's bodies from ritual defilement to cover their sins. Just think if the blood of animal could attain that under the old 
system, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our hearts from deeds that lead to death. King James says, from dead works of the flesh, our consciences from the dead work of the flesh. The new living says, we purify the blood of Christ, we purify our hearts from deeds that lead to death so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. I want to read a part that says, so that we can worship the living God. You see, what he did, the blood he shed, has given us the access to the Holy of Holies. And by so doing, we can worship God. We can stand in his presence to exalt him. The King James says, so that we can serve God. All are up, I mean, they're all put together. Our service to God is also worship to God. So we're going to pray today that God give us the capacity, capacity to be devoted to you, <laughs> to consecrate our lives to your worship. Yes, because of what you did for us, we are praying that God give us the capacity, give us the grace to devote our lives to your worship. To consecrate our lives even to your service. I want you to begin to pray that prayer. Yes, today is a good day to pray this kind of prayer of devotion, of dedication, of consecration to God. That yes, because your blood had purged my conscience from every dead work. So that I can worship you, the living God. So that I can serve you, the living God. I want you to pray that God will give us that grace. Yes, such a day like this, we need to come back to him. We are hanging around the cross. And we need to know that what he did for us, you provoke corresponding action. Corresponding action of devotion, of consecration to him. So pray for yourself that God will help you. Yes, I don't know how, how you've been living your life. I don't know how much time you devote to the worship of God. I don't know how much time you have dedicated your life, your time, your resources to him. I don't know. You know yourself. But now we are before him. We are before the throne of God. So I want you to pray. God help me. Help me. Help me. Yes. I consecrate my life unto you afresh. I devote myself unto you afresh. Yes, pray this prayer. This is this solemn assembly today. Yes, is one of the reasons why we're here to hang around the cross to appreciate what he did and also to, to, to have a, a, a rethinking. Oh, yes, to reconsecrate, to redevote. Yes, to vow that from today, because of what you did for me, I want to serve you more. I want to worship you more. I want to devote my heart to you more. I want to devote my time to you more. Somebody pray today that the Holy Spirit will help you. It's not easy. I tell you, in the flesh, it's not easy. Yes, but he had death with that flesh by dying on the cross. He has crucified. We are crucified with Christ Jesus. Yes, we are crucified with Christ Jesus. Yes, we are crucified with Christ Jesus. Yes, that flesh that hinders us from worshiping in spirit and in truth. That hinders us from serving God diligently. It has been taken care of by the blood. Pray that God will help you by his spirit. Help everyone, every member from our pastor to the newest members that we will, we will rededicate our hearts. We will, be, we will devote our time. Our attention will be given to the Lord. We will devote our heart to him. Yes, we, we make a vow today. Somebody can make a vow that I want to be different in my work with you, oh God. I want, I want, I want a restoration of my worship. Restoration of my devotion to God. Yes, take how many times you spend with him. To, to worship him, to fellowship with him. Take how many times, I mean, how long you spend in his presence. Just to love him, to hang around him, to fellowship with him. Take how many times you devote to his kingdom. Take how many, I mean, what you, what, what you are putting into his kingdom advancement on the earth. Oh yeah, this is a time for a sober reflection. 
This is the time to recommit yourself. Yeah, to devote yourself. Pray that God will help you. God will help me. Hey, every member of the International House of His Presence. Hey, Branda Shankaya. Hey, Kara Branda Shankaya. Hey, also pray for the grace to suffer for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because these are, these are apostolic prayers. These are discipleship prayers. The grace to suffer for the sake of our Lord Jesus. That no matter what, you will take a stand for Jesus. Any situation you find yourself, Jesus first. Yes, you, would, you, you are ready to go to the jail for the name of Jesus. You are ready to be beheaded for the sake of Jesus. Pray that God will give you the grace. Yes, to suffer, to suffer for Jesus. If that will be the will of God. So Peter said, if it is the will of God, so be it. Pray for the grace. Christians, so now are they Christian? They don't want to suffer for Christ. They don't want to even hear it. You have not been somewhere to preach and people attack you. <laughs> hey, you have not been somewhere. You are saying this is the way to go and people are saying no. Compromise. And because of that, you are sacked. <laughs> Better pray that God will give us the grace to stand for Jesus, to suffer shame for Him. Rebranda <laughs> Shakaya, pray for yourself. This is a wicked world. This is the end time. These are perilous times. It takes grace to survive as a Christian. Yes, in your workplace, in the neighborhood, in your associations, in your family. It takes grace to survive and stand as a Christian. Pray for yourself. Yes, Jesus yes, has paid the price. He has released the power. He has gone through the pain. We can also suffer for him. Yes, pray for yourself. Ye karada ya nada ya branda shonga e e kara brandos e brandos kaya haram brandas shanga e ra brandos shanga ya re karada ya nada bra bra bos e bromda shanga ya e ra brandas shanga ya wherefore Jesus also Hebrews thirteen twelve wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate he suffered. That he might sanctify us with his own blood. He suffered without the gate. But with the gate. Let us go forth therefore. This is a command to the children of God. Let us go forth verse 10 and 14. I mean verse 13. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. Bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. Pray for yourself. We have no continuing city here. Why do you want to hold on to this life as if everything is about this life? There's no, there's no eternity. We we'll stand for Jesus. We we'll stand with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point before I round up. We want to pray that God will give us grace to surrender to the will of God. It's one of the things, the prayer Jesus prayed before he went to the cross. In Luke chapter, chapter 22, verse 42, Jesus said, Father, I would have desired that you take in the flesh, in the natural. I would have desired that you remove this cup from me. But nevertheless, not as you will, but as, I mean, not as I will, but as thou will. I want to pray that prayer. Let's use this time to pray that prayer for ourselves. So that we will yield, surrender to the will of God at all times. It's not convenient. Sometimes we want to do our things, but you know what the will of God is. But you pray that God give me the grace. If God could give Jesus that grace to, to, to go through, to go to the cross, even though he prayed, nevertheless, I would have loved this cup. I would, I would have loved it if I would not have to go through this path of suffering. But nevertheless, I yield to your will. Pray that God will give you the grace to always surrender to the will of Christ, to the will of God in your life. Yes, that is actually the cross of a Christian. Always yielding to the will of God. Knowing what the will of God is in every matter and yielding to that will. Pray for yourself. Yes, this is the prayer of devotion. Worship and devotion. Father, help me to always yield. Give me the grace to surrender always to your will in every matter of my life. Whether I like it or not. Whether it's palatable or not. Whether I like it or not. Give me the grace to surrender always to your will in every area of my life. To help, help us in the house of his presence. To surrender always to your will. In the international house of his presence. In our marriages. In our endeavors. In every aspect of our lives. Give us the grace to surrender to your will. In the name of Jesus. Not as I will. But as thou will. 
and so shall it be in Jesus name. Lord we thank you for this moment as we devote our hearts, our time, our lives to you. May you help us. May you quicken us. May you energize us. May you help us as I've, as I've come to say, to, to, to vow to you that from today we will turn a new leaf and I will walk with you. May you enable us by your spirit. May Jesus Christ be expressed through us more and more and more in the name of Jesus. Be glorified, O oh God. We thank you once again for what you did on the cross of Calvary for us. We are eternally grateful, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Celebrate the Lord Jesus. We have for the second Bible reading, a brother Toby Adidoja. Put your hands together as he comes forward to take the Bible reading. Praise the Lord, church. Um, I have the privilege to take the second Bible reading in today's solemn assembly service. Our second Bible reading will be taken from the book of Psalms, no, sorry, Matthew 27, verse 33 to 64. Matthew 27, verse 33 to 64. I'll be reading from the ESV version. Verse 33. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of his court, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. Verse 37. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Verse 38. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, Save yourself, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Verse 41. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and will believe in him. Verse 43. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also revived him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabbat stani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put on a reed and gave it to him to drink. Verse 49. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook. And the rock were split. Verse 52. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tomb after his resurrection, they came into the holy city and appeared to many. Verse 54. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with ale and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women looking there, looking out from a distance, who have followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Verse 57. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea called Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Verse 58. 
he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had caught in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Verse 61. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. Verse 63, and said, Sir, remember how that impostor said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. I would like us to read verse 64, the last verse, for this session together. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest the disciples go and steal him away, and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. I pray the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Brad Toby. I did a wonderful scripture reading. Yeah, we have a ministry in the house. Join me as I make welcome for us uh, ministering songs. Sister Jasmine Omoshari. Put your hands together for her. Good morning, everybody. Um, today is the day that our Lord Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross for you and I to be saved. I don't know about you, but I've made a decision and I've made up my mind that I will follow Jesus for the rest of my life. May the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. to 
follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. just well up in my spirit have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back before me the war be at me the cross before me the war be at me the cross before me the war be at me hey. Turning back, no turning back. 
I'm not rendering special number. But I'd like to remind us, a day like this afford us the opportunity to truly meditate, to truly examine our lives. A day as this afford us the opportunity to truly meditate, to truly think about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. For Peter. Without deceit in our hearts, a day like this gives us the opportunity to think about our relationship with the Father. It's not every day that we'll be shouting and shouting and making noise and shouting and clapping not every day a day as this will help us to truly sit down and think and meditate the next few minutes that I have I want to charge us this is not a teaching service I want to challenge our hearts. I want to stir up in our hearts the reality of God's word as we got the death and the resurrection of Christ. And so I want to, to, to challenge our heart with a topic, the ultimate sacrifice. Bro, Peter, please don't go. Just but on a soft one. The ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice. We need to reflect on how Jesus Christ came during Christmas, we make noise, Christmas carol, we make noise, we cook special rice, special chicken, and all that we celebrate. But that is not all about our salvation. That's not all about our redemption. That was the beginning of our redemption. As Christmas is very important, so also a season like this is very crucial. A season like this is very important in the life of any child of God. A season as this is very, very important. So we need to meditate, we need to think about it. We need to devote time. Ultimate sacrifice. Sacrifice talks about what you surrender what you throw away, what you give away. With, I mean, with, with, with choice, you, 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 you decided to give it away. And ultimate, the most important, the most important out of his, his kind. So what Jesus did was not ordinary. What Jesus was, this was not usual. It was unusual sacrifice. That is why it is regarded as the ultimate sacrifice. And you see, when you read scriptures, you be reminded that God created us. He created us from the beginning. So at the beginning, that man might eternally live with him. We were created to forever live in the image of God. He created us. And God is spirit. God is eternal. God is forever. God is everlasting. So he created us in his image that we might also live eternally. Genesis chapter 1. He created every man. He created Adam so that we might live eternally. But sin came to the world in Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve, they sinned against God. They lost that state, that virtue, that image was lost in the Garden of Eden. So sin entered into the world. And God had to slaughter animal and use the skin to cover the nakedness of the man and the woman. And since then, man 
had started to sacrifice, to engage in sacrifice, sacrifice of bull and of goat animal, to be able to cover sin for a while. To be able to appease God. So from, 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 from that time, man started to, to over, or offer blood of animals to atone for, 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 for sin. Patriarchs in the process of worshipping the Lord. Patriarchs in the process of worshipping the Lord asked to shed blood of animals and made burnt offering to the Lord. When you read Old Testament... Opportunities were given to use animals, to, to use gold, bull, to be able to appease the Lord. You go to the high priest and make sacrifice to cover sin. But the truth is that throughout all these generations, the blood of animal could not take away sin of man. The blood of bull and goat had no capacity to take away sin. And it is an intention of God to restore man to the original place, the place of eternal life. But the blood of animal could not do this. The blood of cow, bulls, and goat had no capacity, had no life in them to be able to redeem man to the original place that God has ordained at the beginning. I'd like to read from the book of Hebrew, chapter 10. Hebrew, chapter 10. Verse 4, it says, For it is, but it is not possible that the, the, that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. We have for when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But the body thou hast prepared me, in burnt offering and sacrifice for sin, thou art no pleasure. There was nothing the blood of animal could, could offer. When he talk, talks about eternal life, when he talks about everlasting life, there's nothing sacrificed from, 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 from Abraham to Isaac to, to Jacob, unto David, unto Moses, and all, all of them. There's, no, there, there, there's nothing eternal. That the blood of animal could offer. But God's perverse agenda right from the beginning was to reconcile man back to himself. His intention is to bring man back to himself. So he has to send his only begotten son. He has to send his only begotten son. To reconcile man back to himself. And you see, total reconciliation was not possible by the blood of animal. And so God has to send his son to pay the ultimate sacrifice, to, to, to pay the ultimate price. And that is what I'm calling your attention to this morning. The ultimate sacrifice that Jesus Christ paid. You see, there is more to Christianity than coming to church. There is more to Christianity than answering Hebrew name, maybe James or John. That you answer Joseph, that you answer Mary does not mean that you are a Christian. Those are Hebrew names or Greek names. But the import of Christianity is what we think about, is what we try to commemorate on a day as this. That is the import, that is what brings about the import of Christianity into the heart of every man. How Jesus came and how he suffered. How he died, he was buried and he rose again. That is the import of Christianity. So, if you live your life on a daily basis and, there, and we cannot find a trace of your positive responses unto these things, then you are not a child of God. When you look at your life every day and the way you live on a daily basis, we cannot see the evidence of your positive responses unto the sacrifice that Christ made, then you are not a child of God. So I also think about it this morning. Three things this morning. Number one, I'd like you to consider the suffering of Christ. Please, consider it. The sufferings of Christ. 
I deal with people on a daily basis. Cat different categories of people. Come on, two mil syringe. To want to collect a blood sample from a man or a woman, different reactions. You will see some, they will start crying, adults. Two mil syringe to, to collect blood. Adults crying. I will tell him, I say, if you are crying like this, what do you want your, 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 your son to do or your daughter to do? Some want to run, run out. Two mil syringe. Just imagine that. But just look at the, the suffering. Matthew chapter 27, we read the long passage. Look at the kind of suffering that Jesus was subjected to. Don't forget, Jesus did not do anything. He was sinless. He had no sin. He had no sin, but because of you and I, he has to go through all that. So friends, consider the suffering of Christ. See that one day, I just look at it. Thorn, I mean, I'm a crown filled with, with thorns on his head. Gigantic nails on his hand and leg. Javelin pierced through his sides. I can't be going, going through that much because I just a few minutes, minutes more. Javelin pierced through his sides. You need to consider the sufferings of Christ, friends. He didn't do all these things for fun. He did all that so that you and I will have eternal life. He passed through all that so that we might have eternal life. Through his blood. That's number one. Consider his suffering. Number two, what should be our responses? What should be our responses to the suffering, to the shame, to the mockery, and to, and to the pains that Jesus Christ had gone through? I'd like to read John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. What should be our responses? I'd like to read from verse 14. Jesus speaking here, he said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believe in him should not what? Should not what? Should not perish but have eternal life. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What God expects us to do, what should be our responses, brothers, sisters, men, and women, the response that God is asking for, I mean, from us is to believe. In his son Jesus Christ. That is the response. God is not expecting you to present yourself to, to, I mean, to be nailed again. No, it's only him that has done such a thing. What is expected from you and I is to believe in the son. Is to believe, is to acknowledge the pains, suffering, the agony he has gone through. Is to believe in God. Is to believe in him. And he said, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth is not, he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of only begotten Son of God. And this is the, the condemnation that light is come to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither come into the light, lest the deed should be reproved. But he that doeth the, the truth come into the light, that his deed may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. The expectation of God is that we believe in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 5, when you believe, then, he said, if we claim that we have the Spirit of God, let us also walk in the Spirit. So, he expects us to, to believe and to keep believing unto the end. You believe and keep believing unto the end. And the last point here 
is sufferings our gains. The suffering of Christ brings gains to us. The pains of Christ, the agony, the, 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 the mockery, the shame, and all things that he has gone through had brought gains into our lives. And so God desired that you embrace this gain. Number one gain is that we have forgiveness from sin. We have forgiveness from sin. Let me read First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. My little children, this thing writes out unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Verse 2. He said, He is the propitiation for our sin. And not for us only, but also for the sin of the whole world. Is suffering our gains. Number one, we have received forgiveness from, from sin. Have you met the Lord Jesus? Have you surrendered your life to the Him? Are you still living in sin? A day as this afford the opportunity to come out from the grip of sin, friends. The work he did on a day like this give you the opportunity to come out of sin. Are you struggling with a particular sin? Are you a child of God? But you have a particular sin that you are struggling with. This morning afforded the opportunity to receive liberty from the stronghold of sin. He died and he rose again. Number two is, is suffering our gain. We have, we have eternal life. Whosoever believe in him will not perish but have what? But have eternal life. He died that we might have life that is eternal in nature. Now, number three is suffering our gain. Number three gain. We have access to God's presence. We have access to God's presence. Let me read Hebrew chapter 4. Hebrew chapter 4. We have access to the presence of God by the reason of what Jesus did at a time like this. Hebrews chapter 4 and from verse, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Look at that verse 16. Let us therefore that on the basis of the suffering, on the basis of the ultimate sacrifice, on the basis of the work that Jesus Christ has done for us, he said, therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Friends, the death of Jesus, the, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ are giving you the opportunity to come boldly to the throne of grace and draw mercy from his presence. But you have to drop your sin. You have to drop your sin and approach his throne. Then in suffering, our gains, we have divine healing. Divine healing is our portion. Divine healing is our inheritance. Divine healing. Let's read Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. You will see that as we, 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 we meditate on a day as this, as we think about it, we have gains. We have gains. We maximize what he has done on a day as this. Isaiah chapter 53 from verse 3. is despised and, re and, and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteem him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Look at verse 5. But he was wounded for our tra transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisements of our peace was upon him and with his stripe we are what? We are healed. Friends, 
is suffering our gain. We have access to divine healing. We have access to supernatural healing by the reason of what he had gone through. So are you here this morning? You can access that healing. You can be healed when you tap into the grace that he has released by the reason of his death and his resurrection. And lastly, his suffering, our gain, we have victory over the devil. We have victory over the devil. For we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We overcame. We overcame. We are victorious by the reason of what he did. By the reason of the pain, the, the, the shame, mockery, kneeling on the, on, on the, the cross, his death, his burial, resurrection. By reason of all those things that he did, we have victory. And scripture says in 1 John chapter 5, For whatsoever that is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith in God. Friends, I challenge your hearts this morning. We are victorious. For your information, maybe I could remind you again, Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. Jesus Christ is no longer on the cross. He's alive. He has risen. But it's very important for us to always meditate on the processes. The stage by stage, the stage by stage, the level by, 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 by level, there's a certain revelation that such will confirm into your heart as a Christian. So today, we commemorate the moment where he died and gave up his goal. What is his, his suffering brought gains into our lives. But the beginning of it, we must embrace, we must think about the suffering and our responses as, it, as children of God is to believe. And as we believe, we keep believing unto the hand. Friends, I challenge your hearts this morning. Let's always remember that Jesus came, he died, was buried, and crucified. And so let's, em let's embrace the work, the ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice. So let this be your heart's desire that you follow him to the end. Let it be your heart's desire that you will live for him forever. Let it be your heart's desire that you will dwell in his presence all the days of your life. Let it be your heart's desire that you will follow him from the moment you acknowledge him unto the end. So that he can give you eternal reward that you desire. Let's bow our heart. No turning back. 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 No I like that you just meditate this morning. Just meditate. He suffered for your sake. He was bruised for your sake. He was punished for your sake. He went through shame and agony for your sake. Because that is the suffering. What should be our response? Our response is to embrace him. Is to believe him. Is to keep believing unto the end. Are you still standing? Do you still believe in him? Does your life show the positive responses? Positive actions? Positive signs that you are still a believer? And as you believe and keep believing, you can embrace, you can enjoy the gains that we have. The forgiveness of sin. Access to his presence. 
eternal life and supernatural healing. Also victory from the works of the devil. Think about these things. Think about these things. Decided that follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No time. Hallelujah. Please let's rise as we take our second hymn, Old Rugged Cross. Yeah. 
to have this kind of songs <laughs> you know the days we live are the days where we sing songs just to please our flesh but God bless the souls that wrote these songs because you know there is no way you sing this song and you don't think about heaven it's just impossible Because songs are meant to point us to God. But it's a sad state we find ourselves in the body of Christ. Our songs mostly are what can happen to my body. What can happen to my pulse. There's nothing wrong about that. But the emphasis should be God. As songs should lead us. It should place our focus on God. It should exalt God. It's Jesus said, if I be lifted up. That's what songs are meant to do. To lift Jesus up. This a few minutes of intercessory prayers. But I want to say a few things before we pray. Thank God for the cross. For that whole rugged cross. And I challenge every one of us to hold on to that old record cross. It's not necessarily about the cross, the stick, it's about the person who hanged on the cross. The cross is significant because of the man who hanged on the cross. And I want to say, as we intercede, intercession is simply means standing in the gap. Standing in the gap between two people. Lawyers will understand that better for us. But simply, we are going to stand in the gap. And I want to say, as believers, how can you take advantage of the two great intercessors that they are in heaven? We have Jesus as an, our intercessor. We have the Holy Spirit as our intercessor. So how do we take advantage of these two great intercessors? Uh, my text is actually, but I'm not going to read because of time, because I want to suspend the little time I have in prayers. But when you leave here, read Romans, the old book of Romans. You get to see from verse 1, say, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are what? In Christ Jesus who walk not, what? After the flesh. So, but if you walk in the flesh, it means there can be condemnation. But as long as you don't walk in the flesh, you have no business with condemnation. If you're walking by the Spirit of God, then we can take advantage 
of the great intercessor Jesus, who is at the right hand of the Father, who makes intercession on our behalf. Then we can also take advantage of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who prays through us. Because we don't know what we ought to pray. So I challenge us, friends, if the ministry of Jesus' intercession ministry will be effective in our life, then we must always intentionally walk in the Spirit. Because if you read Romans that 8 verse from 5, it talks about the carnal mind cannot what? Please the Father. The carnal mind. Those that walk by the flesh cannot please the Father. And we have many Christians, sometimes minds in the flesh, by listening to your emotions. Sometimes, you know what, we think the flesh is just Satan, Satan. It's not Satan. Satan is the last thing. When you're giving to your emotions, you do things because how you feel like. That's, that's giving to the flesh. Serving God by your emotion will not help you and I to take advantage of the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of intercession. It is high time believers rise up From the details of their flesh. From the details of their emotions. How they feel like part time. See feelings are not permanent. That's why we are not encouraged to make decisions by feelings. Because today you may feel one way. Tomorrow you may feel another way. You can wake up this morning. You're feeling just sad. You can wake up tomorrow morning and not feeling sad. So if you take decision based on how you feel, you can't be someone who can please God. Jesus was a man who did not walk by his feelings. At the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was interceding, his physical feelings was that God let this cupboard pass over me. Because he saw what he was about to face. Let this cup pass. But thank God. Thank God that he overcame the feelings that he had. His emotions. And he said, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Let's not be believers who are ruled by our emotions. See, the church is more becoming like the world than the world becoming more like the church. Forgive me, but you see, some music ministers don't even have a church where they worship. They're a church now for themselves. What they are all after is they are trying to meet up a standard that they can be paid for. The line is getting blood. It's about what I can be paid for. Jesus' ministry is not for you to be paid as a believer. Whether you are a preacher or a music minister. That's, that's the list of Jesus' ministry. Some believers don't belong to any church. They tell you, we are the body of Christ. I'm the body of Christ, so I don't need to go to any church. They are not subject to any authority. Preachers are becoming scared to stand on the truth. They are scared. We are getting scared. Because we don't want to be ostracized by society. Society is putting up laws that is in direct opposition to God's word 
And we preachers are scared to put the difference between what is sacred and what is secular. That's why we can invite secular musicians to come to church and minister. All in the name that we're trying to reach out to them. You know, my greatest fear is that it's standing before Jesus and Jesus say, I know you not. I know you not. Yes, you use my name. You heal the sick. You raise the dead by my name. But I know you not. Depart from me. I don't know you. Someone preached a message from the church, from the poopy to hell. People will go to hell from church. But that will not be you, that will not be me. In the name of Jesus. Now why I talk about taking advantage of the great ministry of the Holy Spirit and Jesus intercessory ministry. But I also want to talk about we need to rise up to the demand for intercessors. And I will just read that then we will begin to pray for the last 15 minutes I have. Ezekiel 22 verse 10. I would have loved to read from verse 23 to 30, but I'm just going to read verse 30. Ezekiel. It says, I looked for someone who might rebuild the wall of righteousness. I'm reading with an NLT. That guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the wall so I wouldn't have to destroy the land. But I found none. But let's read with King James. King James said, And I sought for a man among them. Forget about the use of the masculine uh, uh, word there. But it talks about a man or a woman. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land. That I should not destroy it, but I found none. How many believers truly pray for our nation? Myself included, because you know, sometimes we get we get we get hard pressed by the things that we see, by the things we're experiencing in our country, and you get tired as a man sometimes to pray. It's like your prayers are not being answered. But God is looking for you and I that will stand in the gap and intercede for our nation intercede for your family intercede for your children intercede for your spouse intercede for your sibling that God's agenda will be established concerning that area of your life I'd like us to rise we're going to intercede first and foremost we're going to intercede on behalf of our nation we're going to ask that the mercy of God will speak over our nation the mercy of God. While we're in this country, why should we be in this land and we cannot in, influence the hand of God to impact our nation? Pray that the mercy of God will be extended over our nation. Uh, just heard that the national grid has collapsed again. The electricity national grid has collapsed the second time. It's, it's unheard of. It is the same this year that it collapsed, if I'm not making a mistake. We're just in March. So if between January and March, we have collapsed two times. Let's pray that the mercy of God. These things are not rocket science. We talk about electricity. Total, yeah, give power to their staff. Total, yeah. They have light almost in their total village. They have light or two for seven. Shell in their uh, area. It's the same Nigeria that we're talking about that we don't have light. And some companies are providing light for their staffs. So if that is possible, then it's also possible that we can have light two for seven in our nation. Because we are seeing it happen. It's human beings that did that, that made that possible. So it's possible Nigeria can walk, things can walk in this nation. 
I like also pray that the mercy of God, the mercy of God. You see, whenever you pray, let me tell you, prayer is a powerful, a powerful thing. Whenever you pray, you are praying because why? That will influence your space. What it simply means, even though evil thing will be happening in a country, for you and within your space, it will not affect you. That's what it simply means when you're praying. That was why the man who doubted the word, prophetic word given by Elisha, he said, you will see it. You will see it, but you will not partake of it. So in the midst of plenty, he died. Pray that the mercy of God, we ask that the mercy of God will be upon our nation. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We ask, Lord, that mercy will speak over judgment over Nigeria. Oh, yes, Lord. By the blood of Jesus Christ, mercy. 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 Yes, Lord. Lord, by the blood of your son, Jesus, let mercy speak over our nation. Let mercy. Let mercy speak Oh, I like also pray for our leaders, for our president, down to the, the local government uh, uh, councillors, to the chairman of local governments, the governors, the ass of the ass of assembly members, the national assembly members, the senate, the ass of rep. Let's pray that the hand of God will come upon our leaders. Sometimes they know the right decision to take, but because of interest, personal interest, people close to them want personal interest, so they, they let go of the decision they should have taken for the good of the entire country and listen to the person who is giving them a wrong advice. I don't want to believe that everyone who went into politics went there to just make money for themselves. I don't want to believe that's a lie. But sometimes there's a spirit over politics. So when they go in there, because they are not working in the spirit, the spirit over politics talks, takes over them. And the good intention they have, they cannot implement it. They cannot pursue it. By the time they know eight years is over, four years is over, and they are out of office. Let's pray that the hand of God, it, is, it doesn't matter whether those who are in authority now are, they are, are your candidate. It doesn't matter. Because they are already taking decisions that is impacting you and I. What is important is that God, will have, his hand will be upon them. Whether they were your candidate during the election, it doesn't matter. We're no more in the election. We're in the time of governance. That the hand of God will come upon our president, his ministers, the national assembly members, the governors, the house of assembly members, the local government chairman. The hand of God will come upon them. The influence of the spirit of God will come upon them. They will take the right decision. They will know the right thing to do. Wisdom. 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 Yes, Lord. Father, we ask for your mighty hand upon the president and his entire cabinet. Yes, Lord. The Federal Executive Council. We ask that your hand will be mighty upon them, Holy Spirit. Oh, God, let mercy come upon them, each of them. Grant them wisdom, Lord, to take the right decisions, right economic decisions, right medical decisions, Lord. Policy matters, Lord. Help them, Lord, to stay true. Oh God, apakata shapa la brada kapalatea, ishana teliga parateja, rako shapa tena mana. In the name of Jesus, we're gonna pray. Nigeria is known as a religious nation, but if you look at our actions, it doesn't show that we we actually know God. It doesn't even show whether we have met God. There are so many great men of God in, from this nation. So many. If you, if you want to do comparison, which we are not supposed to do, but if you want to do comparison, ministers as based on God's ministers, I can assure you Nigeria will come out with the first five. But if you look at our life, you cannot say these people actually know God. Because even those who are called preachers are deceiving people. 
How can a pastor, a pastor who is in the UK, be deceiving people to come to UK and he be giving them fake hope, taking money? Someone he took over over one billion or for three billion or five billion that they will give them work. A pastor. Then he ran away from UK because that place they will catch him quick. This is madness. Christians, there are things we do that it is unheard of. So I'd like us to pray that the mercy of God will be revealed to every Nigerian. We want people to encounter God. We don't, on Sunday, churches' houses are full. Different churches. But the moment we leave church service, <laughs> the moment we leave, even from church service, we are backbiting someone. Why we are in church, why pastor is preaching, where I already saying all manner of evil about someone who is in church with us. Then we leave church. Our true character show up. I like us to pray that God, the revelation of Jesus will be, will be shared abroad and a, a nation. People will have an encounter with Jesus. People will have an encounter with Jesus. As Lord, Savior and King. As Lord, Savior and King. Jesus, the revelation of Jesus will be, will be upon our nation from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Pray the revelation of Jesus. See, friends, when you have an encounter with Jesus by yourself, you don't need anybody to tell you anything. You don't need any motivation from anybody. You don't need any encouragement from anybody. When you encounter Jesus, that Jesus will encounter people in a nation from the north to the south, from the east to the west. That Jesus will reveal the revelation of Jesus. The revelation of Jesus will reveal. Friends, pray. We have people who are called, who call themselves pastors, but they have not met Jesus. They have not met God. Not in any way. When Paul, who was called Saul, had an encounter with Jesus on his way to Damascus, is the story of his life, the trajectory of his life changed. And everyone knew. Pray that men and women, children, young men, young women will have an encounter with Jesus in our nation. We will not just be religious people. We will be people, a nation that fears God. A nation that honors God in our dealings with people. Yes, Lord, help me. Lord, the revelation of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I kaparata shatena mana rados kipale tena moskia zana kapalate. Let's pray this holy week that people will come to Jesus. Sinners will surrender to Jesus. We want to see a supernatural harvest of souls in this holy week. In this holy week, between today and Sunday morning, we want to see a massive outbreak of harvest of souls, whether they are preached or not. Suddenly, people on the street will have an encounter with Jesus. Muslims will have an encounter with Jesus. Christians who profess to be Christian but don't know Jesus will have an encounter with Jesus. Pray. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask for an encounter. The revelation of Jesus to every heart in our nation. We ask for an avest of souls in this holy week, the remaining days of this holy week. Let sinners come to Jesus. Let sinners encounter Jesus. Ah, in the name of Jesus. The last 90 seconds I have all someone by your side and pray for that person. That's it for that person. Whatever that person may be going through, 
God will ask for supernatural encounter, supernatural intervention, supernatural intervention. Pray for that person. Passionately pray for that person. No matter, it doesn't matter. It might be a health condition. It might be a financial condition. It might be a relational condition. No matter the issue, we pray, Lord, give this hand a supernatural intervention. We ask for supernatural help. In this new week we are about to enter, we ask for a testimony by the workings of mercy. Sanate koshika palatea. Embranate shapaligarata kapalate. I ask Lord for supernatural help upon your people. Kapalate shaya. Minate no shkima nagabalata. Radoshki palina gade. Give the Lord praise for answers to prayer. Magnify the Lord. Exalt him for answers to prayer. We magnify you, Jesus. Be glorified. Be glorified. He pradoshka palia. Thank you, Father. We receive answers to our prayers, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. If you know God has heard you and answered your prayer, give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. You may have your seat in God's presence. Quickly, let's welcome Dickiness Bidemi Kekarekun as she takes the third Bible reading. And after that, we're going to a brief section of worship by the music team. Let's be taking the third Bible reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53, I'll be reading from King James Version. Isaiah 53, verses 3 to the end. That's verses 3 to 12. He is despised and neglected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted, and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet... Yet we did esteem him sticking, stinging of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with, and his, with his stripe we were healed. All we like should have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before the shielders is done. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was stricken of my people he okay verse 9 now was he stricken and is made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he has because he has done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet he placed, yet he placed the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When yes, he pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When he had made his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall proclaim his days. And with pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by the knowledge shall by the knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. 
Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgression, transgressors, and he bear the sin of many, and he bear the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. And the Lord bless the reading of his word, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we be on our feet, please? Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Isaiah 1 18 it says, Though your sin be like scarlet and you make it as white as snow, the blood of Jesus is able to wipe up any form of sin that you've indulged yourself in. He doesn't care about your past, He doesn't care about your circumstance, He doesn't care where you're coming from. The blood has been made available, the blood has been made available for us all. Power, power, 
the walking power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, power, power, on the walking power in the prayer. hiding, wherever you are hiding, is he in the grave? I've heard of the child that was buried because she professed her faith in Christ and she was buried but Jesus was with her there no matter where you are, no matter even if you are in the mountains even if you are in the valley, the blood will locate you and the riches the highest mountain yes Lord and it flows to the lowest valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day he to never lose his power and be riches Highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, he to never. What can wash away my sin? Nothing. What can make me whole Precious, oh, precious is love. Oh, that makes me. Hey, rakara bosh. Hey, kere de 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 bosh. Hey, magrakara da 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 bosh. Hey, kere de 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 de. Hey, magere bosh. Hey, kere de 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 bosh. Hey, kere de 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 bosh. Okay. 
cross he bled for you and me hey karada bosh shake de 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 bo hey kere de 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 bosh can you sort it now hey karada da 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 bosh shake de de bo hey ma kere de 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 same spirit let's take the next hymn in the cross
Hallelujah. It's like we should just stay in the presence of God. It's already 12 o'clock. Hi. You know, these songs, God must bless the people of blessed memories. One of the things I want to do in heaven is to see the people who wrote this song. Damn. They must have an encounter, a, a corner in God, man. May our life express God. You know, while I was standing there, the Holy Spirit will have me speak to us and say that uh, if you're holding any grudge against someone, forgive the person. Because I forgive you. Because I forgive you. Jesus said, because I forgive you, you have no grounds to hold any grudge against someone. I don't know who it may be, but the good thing is that the person that the word is for knows it, he or herself. Forgive. It may be your spouse. If you're a very challenging spouse like me, you have to have enough of the Holy Spirit to forgive. Hallelujah. So please, let's forgive. It's a holy week. Holy week, we should do holy things. <laughs> what a better time to forgive than this holy week. Hallelujah. So, as we share the benediction, we will officially bring the fasting to close. Apart from maybe Pastor Yemi, Brother Olumide, Brother Peter, Eli, you know, those were prophets, so they have to, they want to continue, they are free. But we, that on the earth, we can come back to the head hallelujah amen glory to god so the fasting officially ends but if your leg to continue who are we to stop you who are we so let's remember sunday is resurrection service hallelujah we're persuaded that god will do mighty things in our midst on sunday come expectant invite someone dead things will come alive Dead things will come alive. The life of God. So way we infuse your life. In the name of Jesus. I'm persuaded about that. Let's come expectant on Sunday. Remember tomorrow. 10 a.m. Empowerment 3.0. We'll be having the major part. The major. The, in fact. The major part of the empowerment. Will be happening tomorrow. Tomorrow because. The craft, the different craft will be having different craft tomorrow about four or five different craft, five. So please, if you have not indicated interest, quickly meet the Dickens board, indicate your interest, come on time. If you come late, it's your business. You'll be, the secret, they will start the secret from 10 a.m. <laughs> the secret will be starting from 10, so come on time so that you get the secret. And I'm persuaded God will bless you. Even if you're not going to be the one that will receive the award, God will bless you for coming. You understand? See, sometimes, the thing about church is that pastor may be preaching something else, but God is revealing something else to you. So you may come for a craft. Uh, sewing, is it not? As you come, God will give you wisdom for something else. So, just be in the presence of God. Tomorrow by 10 a.m., Make sure you come around and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's also remember the music team is staying back for Ariaza. Uh, we also want to recognize Reverend Andy Asian for finding our time to worship with us. Thank you so much. We, we, we respect your presence. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's not forget tomorrow, Saturday, there's Prevailer's Place. So, Prevela's place, we're not going on uh, leave, sabbatical. There's Prevela's place. So, don't oversleep and forget yourself. Preve Tell your neighbor, Prevela's place is 60. Put your alarm on. Uh, so that you don't say, ah, Pastor, I thought uh, as we finished fasting on Friday, we just took small uh, one day off for Prevela's place. No, no day off. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, We'll see you in the corporate room, prayer room, tomorrow morning, 6.30 a.m. If we forget any announcement, you'll get the announcement tomorrow when we'll come by 10. 
and also on Sunday morning. Invite someone. Tell your neighbor, invite someone for Sunday service. All right, let's take the benediction. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. One to go. Now, may the God of peace, who brought about Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, working in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you. I don't want to. Leave, I don't want to leave the presence of God. I wish we just add more three hours. <laughs>